I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my workbook series, The Knowledge, will help you make changes like you've never made before. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And today we're gonna to be talking about the four horsemen of the apocalypse. You may have heard this term before. It's in the Bible, it's in movies and TV shows, and it's even in some literature by Mr. John Gottman. He's a famous psychologist and his work is very well renowned. Oh yes, he's very for famous relationships and love yeah. and, and breakups, actually. And research. He's yeah. done a great deal of research. So we're going to be talking about the four horsemen in, of the apocalypse in regards to relationships. And this is really important for you guys because many times you just watch videos about no contact, but then you don't truly learn skills to be a better partner in the relationship. And if you don't learn more effective behavior or how to treat your partner better, you're going to wind up losing them again. That is true. So, Margaret, what do you got there for us? Okay, what I got here is the four horsemen, meaning that they signal the end, that things are going to collapse. Okay, it's a very strong term and very aptly applied. All right, the first of the four horsemen is criticism. Now, we always have some complaints about the person we live with. Unless you're dating Margaret. Yeah. Um, but th there's a world of difference between a complaint and criticism. Mm -hmm. A complaint focus on a specific behavior or event. Craig did not pick up his sneakers. Again. Uh, again. Well, then we're close to criticism. Mm -hmm. I'm really angry that you didn't sweep the kitchen last night. We agreed that we would take turns. Could you please do it now? This is a complaint. Yeah. Like many complaints, it has three parts. One is, here's how I feel, really angry. Two, about a very specific situation you didn't sweep last night. Yeah. And three, um, here's what I need, could you do it now? Okay, so it's a very circumscribed thing with mm. three parts. Yeah. Okay. Um, this is a complaint. In contrast, a criticism is global and expresses negative feelings or opinions about the other person's character or personality. Yeah. See the difference. You're so lazy. Yeah, right. Um, so she says to the, to the husband, why are you so forgetful? I hate having to always sweep the kitchen floor when it's your turn. You just don't care what's wrong with you. Yeah. See the difference, okay? Mm -hmm. There's one specific complaint we can take care of quickly, but an attitude of generally being critical of someone um, is not so funny. Mm -hmm. And from many, many people, I hear that they had parents who were very critical to them, mm -hmm. of them. Um, and it, that, of course, puts you at risk to repeat it on your partner. Yep. Okay? So criticism is one. The next one is contempt. The second horseman arises from a sense of superiority over one's partner. Okay. It is a form of disrespect. So are sneering, name-calling, eye-rolling, mockery, and hostile humor. Oh, it was only a joke when you know it wasn't. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, she says, I think you do a pretty good job of coming home and lying around or disappearing into the bathroom. Mm -hmm. Contempt is poisonous to a relationship because it conveys disgust. Okay. In another example, the husband calls his wife spoiled, mm -hmm. um, which is never a good thing to hear um, because she doesn't wash her car by herself. Now, that's quite a leap, isn't it? You don't wash your car by yourself. Therefore, you're spoiled. Mm -hmm. Okay? And that's to say, this again, something wrong with you. Why do you think you don't have to wash your own car? Mm -hmm. Okay? 
Defensiveness is the next one. Okay. When, for example, a wife gets defensive, the attacking spouse does not back down or apologize. Research shows that defensiveness just escalates the conflict, which is why it's so deadly. Okay? When, once you put somebody on the defensive, you've got trouble on your hands, unless you're really, really unhappy with that person. She complains that it is difficult for her to wash her car by herself. Her husband climbs further up his high moral ground and repeats that she is spoiled if she does not care for her car as well as he cares for his. That's an unreasonable, you know, um, position. Mm -hmm. um, criticism, contempt, and defensiveness don't always gallop into a home in strict order. Yeah. They function more like a relay match, handing one baton off to each other over and over again if the couple cannot put a stop to it. Okay? Like you may put a stop to it for a week, uh, but then it comes galloping back. Mm -hmm. Now, the final one is stonewalling, and there's a lot of talk about stonewalling these days. Um, in marriages where discussions begin with a harsh start, with criticism and contempt, mm -hmm. and discussions lead to defensiveness, eventually one partner tunes out. Yeah. This trumpets, notice the metaphor, this trumpets the arrival of the fourth horseman. Mm -hmm. Okay? One person tunes out. Think of the husband who comes home from work gets met with a barrage of criticism from his stay-at-home wife and responds by turning on the TV. The less responsive he is, the more she yells. Eventually, he gets up and leaves the room. Mm -hmm. Rather than confronting his wife, he disengages by turning away from her. Yeah. He is avoiding the fight, but he is also avoiding his marriage. Yep. He has become a stonewaller. So what it means is you act basic, like, basically like a stone wall, okay? And you don't respond at all, Yep. okay? Um, the stonewaller gives no cues that he is listening, no nodding of the head or saying, I hear you, or I know what you're saying. He merely acts like a stone wall. Wow. Okay, mm -hmm. and that you know you do hear it. And so, well, did you did you suggest so and so or respond to such and such? And you, what did you say? And people will say it doesn't make any difference what I say. He or she will simply not respond. Okay, and you can escalate only so much if you keep getting a non-response. You eventually don't even do that anymore. Yeah, I can imagine. You know, if you're with somebody yeah. that you're constantly trying to connect and and. Right you know, making a bid to repair things, yeah. and they're just completely just not paying attention to you, it would be very frustrating. People have carried that even further now, and when they're talking about narcissistic relationships, they talk about gray rocking, which I guess is even less responsive than stonewalling. <laughs> but it keeps it in the, yeah, in, the, in the stone family, okay? So now we've talked about the things that John Gottman looks for in that 15-minute interview mm -hmm. that he has with people. And if he sees a constellation of these things, he's unfortunately able to predict that the marriage doesn't have a great future. Yeah. Okay. Of the four, which do you think you've seen the most in, like, your sessions? What do you think comes up the most? Certainly stonewalling comes up. He won't respond. He won't respond. He won't respond. Not so much with women as with men. Mm -hmm. Um, you well, know, criticism certainly comes up. And remember, criticism goes beyond a specific complaint to there's something wrong with you. Yeah. Okay. I hear a fair amount of that. I feel like that would be like the first. Yes. And he reaction. lists it first. Yeah. 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 I think that one for me is the one that it'd be like the easiest to just immediately do. Like you're unhappy about something, so you yep. lash out and yep. you're immediately criticizing them. Yep. Um, and then they get defensive. Yeah. And then you're off and running. Yeah. Yeah. And and I like the concept we talked about in the last part of the Gottman one that we talked about. 
the efforts to repair to say, stop, we don't want to do this, you know, or yeah. I need to calm down, any of those things. But it was criticism and contempt, contempt being registering disgust. You never do this. You never have done this. I do, I've given up on ever expecting you to do this. That's kind of contemptuous. And the husband here climbs, climbs up further on his high horse and says, um, you're spoiled. Yeah. 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 Okay, so I'm sure I'm sure it's pretty clear. And if you think about it, getting somebody on the defensive, I mean, it might feel good for the first minute you have them there, but the minute they're trying to defend themselves against you, you're in a no-win position. Yeah. Because you've got them upset. Yeah. Yeah. And and you might win the argument, yeah. but what what really is that? I mean, you're going to wind up pushing somebody yeah. away yeah. to the point where they don't feel safe with you. Yeah. And then the connection is gone. Right. So John Gottman is saying, if any of these things are happening in your relationship, look for help quickly. Yeah, because okay. if you don't, there's a 96% right. chance I think that's you're going to wind yeah. up in a breakup. That's right. Yeah. So it almost seems uh, natural that many of the people out there have done these things. Absolutely. Right? Yes, because, I mean, he, he arrived at these conclusions after a great deal of research and a great deal of experience. So think about what you may have yeah. been responsible for in your relationship right. and how you may have responded in these four ways and think about how you can do it the next time right. because you don't want to do it again with anybody or at least be aware of it so you're less likely to do it or reduce the amount of times that it happens because that can at least make it improved. I would think that stonewalling would be much easier for an avoidant I think so. Attachment style, certainly, than an anxious one. I think so, too. Yeah. And I think the uh, anxious person would probably be more likely to criticize. Yes, I agree. And be defensive if they get criticized back. (laughs) Well, they're so caught up there in their emotional state that they would criticize right away. Good stuff. Okay. There we have it. Give Margaret a thumbs up for the research on this one that she did. Of course, if you want to get our help personally... Just go to my website, askcraig.net, sign up for the coaching option that works best for you. I do email coaching and I do Skype. Margaret, of course, is available for Skype coaching. If you feel that I can be helpful to you, please sign up with me. Just click on Margaret on the top of the website to do that. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And we will talk with you soon.